Hi there, Michael Burnett, AF7KB, the Fast Track Ham Radio License Guy, and this is Phase Angles. As we advance in electronics, it seems phase angle becomes a more and more important concept, and before we get to calculating it, it might be useful to know what it means. Let's start with the nature of a sine wave. A sine wave is really just a graph of a rotating circle. You could say it's a graph of a point on a turning wheel. When we talk about a phase angle, we're talking about comparing one position on that wheel to another in terms of degrees of rotation. So phase angle is just another way to say phase difference. So here's what a 90 degree phase angle between two sine waves of equal frequency looks like. Just as the first sine wave, represented by the solid blue line, reaches the 90 degree mark, that crest of the wave, the second sine wave, the red dashed one, is at the zero mark and starting up. We call that a 90 degree phase angle. If the sine waves matched up at all points, we'd say they're in phase, but those two are out of phase, and they're out of phase by 90 degrees. Now things get a little strange. When we learn DC electronics, we learn that voltage and current always go together. Put a higher voltage on a circuit, the current instantly gets higher because Ohm's law. I call it the garden hose model of electricity, and I'm sure you've heard lots of garden hose-related similes as you've learned DC electricity. The garden hose model works great. For DC, AC circuits make us uh, kind of set aside that thinking. In AC circuits, current and voltage can get out of phase. We can have spots where there's current with no voltage, or voltage with no current. Current and voltage can be put out of phase by capacitors and inductors. So let's say in that illustration that the solid blue line represents voltage and the dashed red line represents the current. In that illustration, the voltage is leading the current by 90 degrees. In other words, the voltage is happening before the current, because remember, that's time going across there on the x-axis, and the stuff on the left happened before the stuff on the right. As you'll learn, that means we have a positive phase angle. When AC passes through an inductor, the current lags behind the voltage. Remember, as that voltage is headed up, those magnetic lines of force are generating opposition to current flow as they grow. For simplicity's sake, we'll say the inductor looks like an insulator to the current for those first 90 degrees of the cycle. Then the voltage peaks and it starts heading back toward zero, and those magnetic lines of force start collapsing, creating current flow. The end result is voltage leads current. Across a capacitor, the relationship is just the opposite. Across a capacitor, current leads voltage. Now there's a way to keep this straight in your head. The summer of 1885 in London, England was dreadfully hot. Of course, in those days there were no refrigerators, but there were ice boxes, and there were commercial ice services that would deliver big five-pound blocks of ice to homes to keep your food fresh. Now, during that summer, Oliver Heaviside was sweating away at his desk, coming up with the equations that would lay the foundation for our understanding of reactances and impedances. Heaviside was absolutely brilliant. But he's all but forgotten these days. The man invented coaxial cable. He predicted the existence of the ionosphere. His telegrapher's equations made transatlantic telegraphy possible. Well, every week, Heaviside's meditations would be interrupted by his ice delivery 
from Eli's Ice Company. Heaviside was a notorious sourpuss. And anything but a social butterfly, he was almost a recluse. And Eli's deliveries always irritated him. One day, though, he suddenly saw that Eli was unwittingly the perfect memory aid for the voltage and current relationships Heaviside was discovering. Gadzooks and egad, old chap, he cried. Voltage, E, leads current, I, across an inductor, L, and current, I, leads voltage, E, across a capacitor, C. It's Eli the Ice Man. Oh, Jolly good, old Bean. Ever since that fateful, and by the way, completely fictitious, day, Hams and other electronic students have used Eli the Iceman to remember that across an inductance, across an L, E, voltage, comes before I, current. E leads I. Across a capacitance, a C, I leads E. Eli... The Iceman. And there he is, right there. It's an absolutely real picture. When we say the voltage is leading the current as it does across an inductance, we mean the voltage happens before the current. We could also describe that state of affairs as the current is lagging the voltage. They use both leading and lagging in the language of the exams. You have to have those sorted out. When we say the current is leading the voltage, as it does across a capacitance, that means the current happens first, followed by the voltage. Of course, we could also say the voltage is lagging the current. We're now fast approaching the topic of a series of questions that, based on my conversations with hams over the years, has scared an awful lot of hams away from the extra exam. Do not panic. It will get you through this. And in fact, these are some of the easiest questions on the exam to get right. You'll see. Remember, if I can do this, you can do this. I passed high school math mostly on my good looks and winning personality, and probably on the teacher's eagerness to never see me again. So relax. Besides, the two sections that seem to be the most intimidating account for, at the most, two questions out of 50 on the exam. I'll go through one of the three phase angle problems in the question bank. But if you have the Fast Track Extra course or our math workbook, you probably already know there is what we might call an interesting and useful pattern to the answers. If you don't have those books, uh, get a hold of the question pool and work out the answers, and I think you'll (laughs) see the subtle pattern. All right, here is one of the questions from the exam pool. It's question E5B07. What is the phase angle between the voltage across and the current through a series RLC circuit if XC is 500 ohms, R is 1 kilo ohm, and XL is 250 ohms? To calculate the phase angle of a series RLC circuit, we need the capacitive reactance, the inductive reactance, and the resistance. They've given us all the values we need right there in the question. All we need to do is plug them into the right formula. Here's the right formula. It's phase angle equals tan negative 1. That means the reciprocal of the tangent of XL minus XC over R. Now, tangent negative 1, the reciprocal of the tangent, is also known as arctan or arctangent. Tangent is a trigonometry function. It's used in this case to calculate the angle formed by the adjacent and hypotenuse sides of a right triangle when the opposite and adjacent sides are known. These are just terms that are used in trigonometry to designate the various sides of a triangle. You have an adjacent side, an opposite side, and then that long side, which is the hypotenuse. Now, 
Impedance and phase angle problems can all be diagrammed and solved as right triangles, with the resistance represented by that adjacent side, consider that running along the x-axis of a graph, the reactance represented by the opposite side, and the impedance is the hypotenuse, and the phase angle is represented by the angle between the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Isn't that cool? So that's what we're solving with this formula. The answer comes out in degrees. Now that triangle can point sort of one of two ways. If we have more inductive reactants than we have capacitive reactants, then the triangle is going to be upright like this, and we'll have what's called a positive phase angle. If we have more capacitive reactants than we have inductive reactants, then the triangle gets turned upside down, and now we have what we call a negative phase angle. So always remember, capacitive reactance is a negative value. That'll help you keep the formulas for this straight. If the degrees are a positive number, that means the voltage is leading the current. If the degrees are a negative number, that means the voltage is lagging the current. Think of it this way. Just consider that the sign of the angle always refers to voltage. If the sign is positive, the voltage is ahead of the current. It's winning the race. If the sign is negative, the voltage is behind the current. It's losing the race. So let's plug in our numbers. Phase angle equals tangent negative 1, or the arc tan, tan minus 1, of 250, that's the inductive reactants, minus 500, that's the capacitive reactants, over 1,000. Let's plug it into the calculator. We'll go second key, tan minus 1, then the numerator-denominator key, 2, 5, 0, minus 5, 0, 0. We'll go down and do the uh, denominator, 1, 0, 0, 0. And we got to close off the parentheses. You notice that it automatically put the opening parentheses in there for you, and we press enter. And ta-da! Minus 14.036 yada 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 yada. It's minus 14 degrees. The sine of the phase angle tells us where the voltage is relative to the current. A negative phase angle means the voltage is behind the current. Now, the answer you'll get for this one on the exam is the phase angle is 14.0 degrees, with the voltage lagging the current. Well, congratulations, you were just doing trigonometry. Now, let's step back a moment. Does that negative phase angle make sense? We have more capacitive reactants than inductive reactants, so we have a net capacitive reactance. A circuit looks like a capacitor. Eli the Iceman tells us that across a capacitance, voltage lags current. So, yes, negative 14 degrees makes sense. Okay. Subscribe to the channel because this video collection is growing and growing. Go like our Facebook page. Visit the FastTrackHam.com website. That's about enough for you to take care of in one day. And thanks for watching. 7-3.